Happy birthday, Pixar, and happy first anniversary. You can come out and get a piece of cake, and we'll bring the drinks around. Also, would you uh, sort of mix it up and introduce yourself to the new people? Ed Catmull, Pixar's joint vice president, opening a party to celebrate the company's first year of independent operations selling the computer. They also found out today they had something else to celebrate. Luxo Jr. has been nominated in the 1987 Academy Awards. The owner of the company is Apple founder Steve Jobs. How did he feel about the nomination? I think it's the second, only the second time that a computer animated film has ever been nominated. And the first one was sort of a, uh, not a completely computer animated one. The computer, I just guess, just did the in-betweening. So this is the first time a truly computer animated film has been nominated. I think that's great. And I think it portends uh, much more of this stuff in the future. The future? I mean, the why we want to implement things in, in uh, hardware and computer graphics is because the basic algorithms are very, very complex. And in order to get any work done in our lifetime, we have to get a speed up now and not wait for general purpose machines to finally catch up to us. Uh, I think they'll catch up to us, by the way, in about 2000 or 2010, uh, cost effectively. So we've got to drop it into hardware now. Rob Cook and I, who's one of the senior uh, scientists around here, um, invented a process for doing this sort of thing and um, it's somewhat radical uh, we've written it up for SIGGRAPH this year finally after four years of thinking about it uh, but um, we're currently putting it in hardware and it should enable us to make pictures uh, on the order of a hundred to a thousand times faster than a VAX uh, which means for the first time that the cost of the machinery is no problem is, is not the driving force in making an animated film. Uh, the rendering part now becomes cheap. And what becomes expensive is the people time, the animators, the, the model building. And so I'm going to turn my attention to that in the future. Animation at, at, a, at a high level of perfection is not economically feasible anymore. Like in the, in the heydays of Disney, where there were thousands of artists that you could hire very cheaply, that was wonderful. Uh, maybe not for the artists, but uh, for Disney. And uh, now it's the only way is to do it is going to be with a computer. So it'd be nice to get rid of all that trashy animation and get back to some, you know, Fantasia quality stuff. What our business is is, is uh, visualization, and uh, animation of complex processes falls out of that. And there are several steps in animation. One is to, you have to model what you're going to move. You have to animate it, which is adding, adding the time to the model and then you have to render the result. Now the rendering of the result, which has, it is the part that has taken everybody's best brains for the last 15 years, but it's the least human part. I mean, it's physics. You, you say, here are the light sources, here are the colors, uh, here's, uh, here's the textures we want on the surface and the kind of glossy finish or, or matte finish we want. Um, go render it, machine. <laughs> you want that just to happen, just instantaneous if possible, so that the real work of doing a, a, a piece of art or a piece of scientific uh, education is, is the design of the piece and the, uh, the creation of the storyline and the, the look uh, and, and the, you know, back the human part. So that's where we're headed.